You are tuned in to Wearable on Air with Hillary Topper, the only show featuring the most innovative products and prominent leaders in wearable technology. You know, I immediately said, I want that, let's build it right now. But when we started going out, out to, for VC money, <laughs> Um, and you know, let's let's be frank that you know most VCs are men, and uh, basically, they were like, why would anybody want that? What else does it do? And we're like, no. The point is that it's mostly a beautiful ring. It just happens to notify you, and you can set up what that is very subtly. So this is a you know shift in sort of thinking about uh, not every device needs to be a Swiss Army knife. Um, so also moving into like what I think of more as like legacy wearages and wearables and heritage. Um, and what uh, things that you know couture and luxury brands do well is to create items that have longevity and that we want to keep. And this is a an interesting direction in sustainability. So this is one of my favorite collaborations between Opening Ceremony and Intel, which has you know it's real metals, real skins, real stones. And when the screen is off, it's sort of just a matte black. You don't even know it's a wearable. It's worn on the inside of your wrist. Um, and you know this was done mostly as a concept project, but this I really see as a sort of future vision of how. This is a device that I would want to keep for a long time and that I could identify with as sort of a, a piece of jewelry that could become part of my life. So also happily, now that just this last past season, Iris now has a whole our old line of wearable tech, so we are moving in the right direction. Um, but all these things I just mentioned are negating the space of the body. So this is Rachel Kalmar, who's a data scientist. Um, and this is what she actually wears every day to kind of track data, and she's like, she's actively collecting all these things. But really, I use it as a point of we're not properly utilizing the architecture of the body in terms of wearables. If we're only working on wrists, and we're really just kind of attaching phones to our wrists. Uh, so, for instance, you know, how does Alexander McQueen get those those constructions to stand up? And this is a real interesting crossover in the industry where fashion designers aren't really trained as engineers. Um, so it's a very niche part of the market, but a very interesting one that led me very much into the, the sort of belly of the beast of manufacturing for real fashion labels. So for example, um, this is a couture bathing suit collection that I did with a brand called Yankala for Mercedes Men's Swim. And what, how this was created was I first designed um, the sort of silicone parts of the system in a 3D CAD program, flipped those models, then printed the molds, um, then cast those molds in platinum silicone, um, embedded textiles, and then embroidered with real gemstones, and then assembled with the rest of the bathing suit. So this process, getting this process done in the context of traditional fashion manufacturing, was a nightmare. <laughs> but, it was, but it was a wonderful process to think about how um, we can use um, real kind of artisanship along with technology. So as I am into the limb directly. So, this is a personal belief of mine that biology is really the next hardware revolution and we should be mimicking natural processes and sort of treating it like this is the century of biology that we are in. So one of the ways that this can sort of impact fashion, and I, you know, I talk about the, this idea that we're not going to remove um, from our sort of nature this idea that we want to have newness in fashion. And that's what fast fashion has always granted, this idea that it's so much fun to, to kind of get new stuff and to, and to really be able to explore and have it be a form of personal expression. So if we're going to do that, why don't we do it in an appropriate materiality? Uh, so, you know, something that will actually disappear after three months of use, that, that, that could be part of the marketing plan. So, you know, this is, um, I, I use these as, as inspirations. This is from the Mediated Matter Group at, uh, at MIT, and this is a 3D printer that prints with a shrimp chitin basis. So this is some, a material that will dissolve if you put it in salt water. So kind of imagine a, a line of jewelry that's printed in this, and at the end of the summer you throw it in the ocean and, you know, and it goes away. Um, and this is a dissolvable circuit made of silk and, and magnesium. So just rethinking our kind of material culture doesn't mean that we can still think about fashion, fast fashion paradigms. Also, how sustainability metrics, technological infrastructure systems, can really um, can really help us in that we can think about the technologies not being at odds with sustainability. Fashion suffers a lot from when people think about sustainable fashion, they often like hemp in this kind of hippie paradigm, and we're saying no, no, we're going to go totally the other way and run kind of enterprise software systems to to optimize manufacturing processes so you you, know, so you have less um, kind of overhead and less waste. Um, and, Okay, great. I'm almost done. It's okay. I'm, I'm not under 20, but yeah. So um, one of our designers, uh, Daniel Silverstein, is running a zero waste um, design initiative. So he, his whole collection 
is done basically uh, with, with zero waste of textiles, but then he actually started a new initiative recently called Reroll, where he's collecting pre-consumer waste and, um, and putting this, like reconfiguring it, t taking all the pieces and um, making it into fresh garments, which he sells online starting at $80 and they're handmade in our office. And now we're bringing him into this collaboration with software where they're actually going to use their visual algorithm to lay out and stitch these things together to automate this process even further and to bring the cost of the collection down. So I'll just end with talking about um, just a couple of our companies um, that we are incubating. The first is Thesis Couture, which is re-architecting the high heel from the inside out. Um, we, you know, I, I don't know if most people don't know that this is what's inside all high heels. It's literally medieval technology and it's, he was saying this is like, I think this is criminal. Um, that, that this is what women are walking around on. Even the highest brands are you know, working on it's this and cardboard, um, which has nothing to do with your body. So the, the founder of this company, um, Dolly Singh, she's Elon Musk's former head of talent at SpaceX. She was super frustrated walking their factory floors in her high heels, started talking to her, you know, the, the engineers there and formed a team that involves a rocket scientist, an astronaut, a mechanical engineer, me, an orthopedic surgeon, and a, and a lawyer, <laughs> and a high-end shoe artisan, um, and, and a design, high-end shoe designer. And we are doing, you know, CAD-first design, um, you know, looking at dynamic finite element analysis. We have IP around the ballistic gray polymer and how the density mappings are happening inside the shoe, and really kind of going, first principles, um, engineering, um, and this is the, the kind of team we recently launched, um, but very much, from a very a high end aesthetic, so this is not a comfort shoe. We, that's a bad word to us. Um, mm -hmm. This is, you know, a glamorous New York product, and the first collection um, is all based on sort of um, pioneering women in the space, inspiration people like Helen Keller, Sally Ride, Serena Williams. Um, and the problem is that in fashion, emotion is the killer app, and they, these were not sort of tapping into all the things that are um, amazing about why people want to wear fashion, why people want to make fashion. It's about personal expression, it's about identity, um, it's about desire, and you know we need to sort of start be, be thinking more holistically across these two uh, ways. It's like, how do we quantify ourselves, and also how do we um, create an entire new system for expression? So last year has seen sort of the rise of devices like the Apple Watch, which are very, very beautiful, but in the fashion industry, this is now basically sort of, it's, it's failing. And um, this is a great article from Vanessa Friedman, who's the fashion director for the New York Times. And she talks about you know, wearing the Apple Watch and really liking it as a device, and she thought it was useful. But she stopped wearing it because it was not part of, part of her identity, and she didn't want to be identified with the group of people who wore this. And this is a real thing about thinking about, you know, how do we actually create kind of different, um, diversified uh, products that express individuality.